I remember the wonder of being a child when food was always exciting. But in adult life, that magic has often disappeared. I want to bring back the wonder of food on a monumental scale to remind us of just how magical food can be and make us all feel like kids again. Supersizing our school days. Hula! Turning the tea break into a record-breaking event. And breakfast into an epic journey. I built my reputation on combining food and science on a micro scale. So putting down the tweezers and stepping into the land of the giants is for me a journey into the unknown. But it's worth the risk to bring back that childhood magic to us all. This time, I'm taking on ice cream, struggling with gallons of nitrogen. Oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sweating in a makeshift steam oven. Bloody hot in here. And building tons of unstable ice cream. All in the bid to make the biggest 99 flake ever. This is the most ambitious thing I've ever tried to do. This is my record-breaking, fantastical food adventure, and everyone is invited. For me, ice cream represents the ultimate magic moment of childhood. And these memories all came from the most wonderful of British traditions. The ice cream van, the perfect slice of summertime. It provided the soundtrack and taste to millions of childhoods, mine included. My earliest, best food memories all involve ice cream. The sheer excitement of the ice cream van. I still remember now, whenever you heard those chimes, you screaming mum, trying to find her purse, you're so desperate to get that money to get your ice cream. And you get to the van, and this man in a white coat behind looks like a giant, so he almost had to get on tiptoes to grab the bottom of the ice cream. It was just pure magic. And that memory, I think, stays with us forever. As a chef, I was inspired to combine ice cream and science, leading to the creation of one of my favourite dishes. So this way of making the ice cream, by using liquid nitrogen, the ice cream mixture freezes so quickly, the ice crystals stay tiny, and that means super smooth ice cream. So there we are, nitro scrambled egg and bacon ice cream. Sadly, ice cream vans have pretty much disappeared from our streets. Today, we seem content with multi-packs from the supermarket, and the many mad flavours from the ice cream van that so inspired me have just vanished. Today for the ice cream man, it's just the van, no customers and a magazine. So I want to rekindle that magic and excitement by building the world's biggest ice cream and make us all feel like kids again. But the big question is which ice cream should I supersize and turn into a record breaker? Time to hit the road and conduct a less than scientific experiment. Nice to see you. To see you, ice. I've got an armful of classics and a simple game of higher or lower to find out what is the nation's favorite ever ice cream. Okay, so first up, mini milk. We'll pop that there to start off with. Mini milk, the ultimate low cow, high calcium lolly, which has been saving our kids' bones for almost 40 years. So now, got a rocket. The rocket lolly, the classic from the 60s. But how will it fare against the mini milk? Higher or lower than a mini milk? Higher. Higher. Next up, the Cornetto. Higher or lower? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> you like strawberry. <laughs> now it's late 80s rival. We'll have a magnum affair. So, magnum. Higher or lower than a Cornetto? Higher! So, we have a new leader, but can it beat the classic ice lollies? <laughs> Strawberry split. <laughs> I'm shocked. Orange made? 
Some memories being triggered there. <laughs> Finally, how will the old ice cream van classic fare, the 99 Flake? <laughs> Mr Whippy with the 99 chocolates in it and some red sauce. Just because you can only get it from an ice cream van, so that's why it made it special. Okay. Well, this might not have been the ultimate test. It did show that everyone has their own favourite ice cream until you start talking about the magic of the ice cream van. And then there is only one ice cream. There is only one king. The 99 and Flake. So a soft scoop 99 is the one I'm going to supersize. This iconic ice cream has got unlike the origins. Before she became the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher was a food scientist who put air into ice cream so it could be pumped through a machine and a British classic was born. But just how am I going to transform this six inch classic into the world's biggest ice cream? Time to head to my secret food lab. Right, so here's how I plan to bring the ice cream van experience back, but on a massive scale. The existing world record for an ice cream is 2.8 metres. I want to smash this and build a giant 99 flake the size of a building, five metres high, enough ice cream to feed a whole town. I'll flavour this soft scoop ice cream with the taste of our favourite ever lollies. But to do this, I'm going to need some serious food engineering. And to properly bring back the magic of childhood, I'll need an ice cream van of my very own, bigger and better than any other. Right, what's the plan? Well, at least in theory. Next, in order to build the world's biggest 99, I cook up a liquid nitrogen storm and take an adventure into an ice cream wonderland. I'm trying to build the world's biggest ever 99 flake and make everyone feel like kids again. The first thing I need to do is figure out how to produce the vast amount of ice cream needed for my giant 99. Now, I normally make ice cream on a pretty small scale. We're talking half a litre, a litre max. And I make it by cooling the custard with liquid nitrogen. It's so cold, it freezes the ice cream so quickly, the ice crystals will stay tiny and I have a super smooth ice cream. But I'm trying to make the largest ice cream on the planet. And for that, I need to supersize my ice cream making technique. I'm filling up the cement mixer with over 25 litres of vanilla ice cream base, to which I'm then going to add liquid nitrogen, 40 gallons of the stuff. At minus 197 degrees centigrade, liquid nitrogen is seriously cold. Okay, tell me when you're ready, and then I'll start the mixer. Hang on, two, ready. one, go. In theory, gallons of smooth, cold ice cream should just be seconds away. Oh, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. OK, that's not good. God, that's not good at all. Yeah, what's happening, as it transfers into the custard, it's bubbling up. Mm-hmm. Right, a bit of a rethink. A horizontal mix is what I need. That's better. Pop this on. OK. <laughs> the outside is starting to freeze, but the inside just isn't freezing, it's still liquid. Time for loads more nitrogen. OK. Hard to say what's going on in there. A little mixing won't hurt. Right, the moment of truth. Yeah, it's ice cream in parts. If you look down here, you can see I've got custard, completely runny. If you listen to this, rock hard frozen pellets of ice cream. It's just not, it's not frozen evenly at all. I think we've got some serious rethinking to do. It's clear now that making a 99 the size of a building is going to be a lot tougher than I first thought. 
I need some proper help. And for that, there's only one place to go, Britain's ice cream capital, Gloucester. Since the 1950s, Gloucester's been home to the largest ice cream factory in the country. Row upon row of workers would spend their days making many of the classic tastes of our childhood. So open your mouth and put an ice cream foot in it. Strawberry flavour, funny feet. The rows of workers may now be replaced with machines, but it still remains a Willy Wonka world of ice cream madness. 1.4 billion ice creams and lollies are pumped out of this factory every year. Almost 200 million magnums. That's more than two for every single person in the UK. Enough lolly sticks to stretch around the world and over 7,500 kilometres of Vianetta. You can see, the ice cream's coming out of here slower than this is moving, so it's got no choice, it has to ripple. That's how they make Vianetta. <laughs> my childhood dream to be able to go into an ice cream factory and just eat ice cream straight off the line. And my adult dream is to make something like this but a hundred times bigger. And to do that, I'm going to need an ice cream expert. Meet Dave, the king of ice cream, responsible for thousands of frozen treats each day and the ideal person to help me make my giant 99 flake. Dave, I want to make the largest ice cream in the world. On a scale of one to ten, yeah, what yeah. would you give the kind of difficulty of this? Well, I'm, I, I can only quickly think of quite a few difficulties. So on a scale of one to ten, maybe a nine or, or, or a ten. If you've got maybe three metres of, uh, of, of cone, oh, yeah. so that might be something like a metre and a half of ice cream then. Yeah, maybe a metre and a half. Portion. Yeah. So a metre and a half, that would be something like maybe uh, 1,500 kgs of ice cream, 1,500 litres. A ton. A, a, a ton in weight. That's the weight equivalent of one small car, 10 plump chefs, or 10,000 normal ice creams, which is a lot. We're only used to making relatively small amounts of ice cream, making a ton. We'd have to give it some thought about how we could do that. And it, potentially, we could make the mix on site, and we could maybe make a... Uh, uh, Enough of mix, but how we go about making a container? Are you up? Are you up for giving it a go? Of course we are. Of course we are. We've got a good set of guys here. We've got a good team. We're up for any any challenge. So I've got myself an ice cream factory and a team of experts. It's time to put them to work. I've tasked Dave and the team to produce the ton of ice cream required to make my giant Mr. Whippy. It'll be frozen solid, so I can then carve it into the shape of the classic 99. At this point in the production, the ice cream is flavourless. The traditional vanilla flavour is added later. One tonne, that's a thousand litres of ice cream to sit on top of a cone. That's, a, that's an enormous amount. It's not something that we've done before. It's not something that we know exactly how to do. It's going to be a, a, a toughie, there's no doubt about it. With my giant ice cream underway, I now need to pick a place to eventually serve it. And we're better than the town that's given us so many wonderful ice cream memories, Gloucester. It's time to give something back, and I want it to be spectacular. My giant ice cream is currently flavourless, but for me, the magic of the ice cream van was the fact that you had these incredible choices. So I've got to find a way of incorporating some of these nostalgic flavours into my giant 99 flake. So. I think it's time for some serious ice cream experimentation. Right. Oh my go. god, you've been busy. Fab. Choc ice. I do remember choc. I do remember choc ice. Red. Samara. Exotic fruit. Well, it's nice with a fruit and fruit and ice cream combination. What's it inside? <coughs> wow, that looks like something interesting, doesn't it? You don't see these anymore. <laughs> What are you making there? Uh, hang on. All right, it's meant to be. Funny foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, no, can we just get... Mix it all together. I'll just mix it together. Oh, Cornetto. Oh, oh another Magnum, almonds. Ah, Calipo. Look at that. Can't beat a twister, can you? Can't 
now. Okay, that's quite a good mix. Here goes. I'm not sure what flavour is going to come out of this mixer. <laughs> I have to say it's pretty good. There's a lot going on there. You got everything in there. You know, it's got the fruit, orange, to the strawberry, to the water ice element, and the sorbet element of it. Then you've got the bits of crunch from the chocolate and the nuts. There's no way you'd guess all the ice creams that went into that. Impossible. If we're trying to make an ice cream that combines everyone's favourite, but they, they can't taste their favourite in it, it's not maybe not the best way to go. So blending the flavours of classic lollies isn't the answer. Time for a rethink. I want everyone to enjoy my giant ice cream in their favourite flavour. I need to devise a magical way for them to choose their own topping. I'm thinking specially designed cannons to launch those classic flavours at my 99 one by one. So I plan to make edible paintballs that can be injected with different toppings and fired at my giant ice cream. First is Twister. So here's how you transform a lolly into ammunition. I've moulded two halves of chocolate into a cannonball shape, into which I add the classic Twister flavours of strawberry and pineapple gel. I've just got a, a warm pan on the heat here. Just pop it into the pan until the chocolate just starts to melt. And then just stick them together. Okay, so there is my twister in a paintball. But I'm not stopping there. For another one of my toppings, I want to capture the classic orange clupo. So here has some orange syrup that I've made and frozen two spheres joined together on a skewer. In this bowl here, I have an orange jelly which is not set yet. So I'm going to enrobe this frozen orange syrup in this orange jelly. How am I going to do that? By dipping it in liquid nitrogen and then out of the nitrogen into the jelly. And then the cold outside of that sphere will set the jelly. Whilst the inside melts back into a liquid. So here's my Twister and Calippo edible paintballs. I'm also going to make Magnum, Feast, Mint Chocolate, Cornetto and some of the other great nostalgic ices. And then all I need to do is load them into the cannons and fire them at my giant ice cream. Fantastic. With the flavour balls sorted, now it's time to test the cannons that will fire them onto the world's biggest ever 99. Three, two, one. Oh, yay! <laughs> I may have the flavours, but I don't yet have the ice cream. Back at the factory, it's the moment of truth. Dave and the team have been freezing the ice cream for weeks. Will my giant 99 now come to life? The project is a, a totally different project for anything that we normally do within the ice cream world. There's definitely people within the factory who think we're absolutely crazy. I think to a certain extent, we also think that it's a bit of a crazy stunt ourselves on the project team. My team carefully removed the casing to see if my one-ton ice cream is frozen all the way through. So far, so good. But less than a minute later, a giant crack appears. Despite being stored at minus 40 degrees for over a month, the inside of the ice cream is still soft. It's not the news I wanted to hear. Hello. Um, unfortunately, after we took the third side off, the physical weight of the ice cream uh, created a crack and the side of the ice cream gave way. I'm supposed to be revealing my giant ice cream to the people of Gloucester in just six weeks' time. To make it happen, I'm going to have to think of a different way to freeze it. So, the recipe has to be reworked to make this next ice cream sturdy, not fall apart, 
but it's still got a taste for it. And I'm not going to know any of that for at least another month, which is cutting it incredibly fine. I'm in no control of it. I don't, what, I don't know what it's going to turn out like. I don't know if it's going to fall apart again. I don't know if it's going to be too hard to eat or ice it. And that, I don't like that feeling at all. I want to bring back the magic of ice cream with a bang. Oh, yay! And make us all feel like kids again by building the world's biggest ever 99. But so far, things haven't gone to plan. In a few weeks, I'm aiming to serve my giant 99, and the engineering challenge is proving harder than I ever imagined. Myself and ice cream expert Dave have been working round the clock to try and crack it. This time, we've come up with a different plan and a different approach. And very simply, the approach is we'll freeze it from the inside out and from the outside in. Double freezing is the best solution I can think of, but with this ice cream a thousand times larger than anything I've ever made before, I still have no idea if it's going to work. And because it takes weeks to freeze, this is my last shot. It reminds me of something like Doctor Who. <laughs> it looked like a miniature Dalek with the modifications done to it. <laughs> the team are piping in the ice cream as quickly as possible, while simultaneously adding the extra cold dry ice to the core. We've got about 20 minutes or so, so we're working against the clock to get it in as quick as we can. Most important at this stage is that we freeze it as fast as we can. So we need to get much dry ice in. We, we know there's a rush on, so we've got to get it finished. Hope that's enough, I've got to go. Freezing an ice cream this size is a massive challenge. One mistake can completely ruin the texture. It's really important that we get this ice cream into the cold store as soon as possible. If it freezes over a long period of time, you get very big ice crystals, and that gives a really nasty mouth feel. So we want this to have the nice creamy texture that we all associate with the old Mr. Whippy ice cream. With the box full in just 20 minutes, it's then rushed into a giant minus 40 degree freezer. We've rigged it with blasting cannons too that will hit it with super cold air for the next crucial four weeks. But we've done the best we can. It's all done now, all the planning that we've put in. The guys have been tremendous all day. We are where we are, we'll see what it works. With nothing left to do with the ice cream but pray, I still have an even bigger challenge ahead of me making the world's biggest cone. People used to eat their ice cream off specially made pieces of glass or paper. But a century ago, some bright spark came up with the idea of using rolled pieces of wafer to support the ice cream, paving the way for the 99 to be born. But how do you make a cone big enough to hold one tonne of ice cream, and which tastes wonderful too? And there's two types of ice cream cones. There's these ones, which, quite frankly, taste of cardboard. Then there's these ones, roll cones. Now, these taste much, much better. And more importantly, I think I can make these on a massive scale. So here's how you make the roll cones. Here I've got a waffle iron. And then just pipe some of my waffle batter mix, which is basically eggs, sugar, flour, and a little bit of vanilla. That looks about ready. Whilst it's still warm, it can be shaped into a cone, easily done on a small scale, but once it cools, it becomes brittle and therefore impossible to roll. Like this. So for my massive cone, I'm going to have to find a way of cooking the batter so that it stays flexible for long enough to be able to roll it into the cone shape. I want to achieve this by adding another element to the cooking process, steam. I need a very big steam oven to do this. Steam will allow the batter mix to retain moisture and therefore keep the cone flexible while we roll it. So, cooking instructions for giant ice cream cone batter mix is place in well oiled pan. Careful not to uh, drop any sweat onto the pancake. Oh, yes. It's a must. And leave in the oven for. I don't know, really. Bloody hot in here. Oh, should we get out? <laughs> I think we should have should get out before I pass out. Oh. I was thinking of After a slow bake on a low heat, we're ready to check the mix. 
It may look like a right mess, but I think there's something in this. It's worked. The cone pancake mix is now cooked enough, but without being brittle. The process works, but even a sauna still isn't big enough for me to construct the world's largest ice cream cone. It's time to put the engineers at my high-tech development centre to work. I've asked them to build what I'm pretty sure is the biggest steam oven ever seen. And by combining a few bits of plastic, some gas burners and modified wallpaper strippers, that's exactly what we've now got. 32 whole eggs, 20 egg whites, 3,200 grams of milk, 3,200 grams of flour, 3,200 grams of castle sugar, 960 grams of melted butter, so it's, set, it's three, six, nine, ten, yeah, about 12 kilos. This mix will hopefully become a super strong and flexible cone, big enough to hold the weight of a small car. For a giant pancake, you need a giant whisk. Combine all the ingredients together in a large mixing bin. Pour and smooth 24 pints of mix into the middle of the oven. When you're making things on such a big scale, you've got a lot of other considerations to think about because there's a lot of weight and just peeling it off and carrying it is going to be tricky. Then it's time to turn on the mega oven. So we've got dry heat now. They're fired up, pumping heat into here. And we've got two steam heaters as well. Big question, is it working? I'm hoping that two hours on 100 degree heat should bring my giant cone to life. But instead of strong and flexible, all I've got is a watery mess. I think it's just, it's taken so long to cook that it's absorbed a lot of the moisture from the steam. Uh, and you can see it's got a lot thinner. Yeah, that's the problem when you're ramping up to this kind of size. You know, it's the first time we've done anything like this. Um, I may have bitten off more than I can chew. It's time to bring in the experts, some of the boffins behind the Olympic Stadium. The main man is Wolf Mangelsdorf, who, with a name even more complicated than mine, should be much smarter. So what I want to do is make the biggest ice cream cone in the world mm. and have the biggest lump of ice cream in the world sitting in the cone. It's going to be strong enough to support itself. Mm. But the question with that is, will it be too tough to eat? OK, we've got, we've got a number of challenges here, yeah? One, one is obviously the making of it, yeah? I mean, you're sort of moving from, from model scale to building scale. And you're, you're seriously into weights that I would r recognise in building terms, yeah? You need, you need to over-proportionally grow them to get... I the have same, no idea what Wolf is talking about right now, but it doesn't sound very good. So it needs to have enough strength so it doesn't do that, yeah? So I think that's, that's going to almost make this impossible. Yep, just what I thought. I'm stuffed. So what on earth can I do? So what we do with buildings is we, we create a form and then we build a structure that holds up that surface, like a skeleton or something. And then we use this like a cladding material on the outside. But even if we use this, we need to have a frame to, 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 to stick these on. So there is a cone-shaped light at the end of the tunnel. It may be a departure from my original plan, but at least this one might just work. In order to put Wolf's master plan into action, I'm building the world's biggest cone in the same way they build skyscrapers. We've put a solid structure inside of the cone to help support the ice cream's vast weight. And the outside is going to be a delicious covering of special waffle cone tiles. And the first step of this is gallons of white chocolate cement. So by brushing this on to the muslin, I'm then going to have a really nice, delicious, kind of sticky base that the tiles are going to stick to. Obviously, we've got to get it tiled, and we've got to transport it, and we've got to get the ice cream on top of it. But now, the, this cone is coming to life, and that is so exciting. My chefs have been working through the night, making the hundreds of waffle tiles needed to cover it. And then what we're going to do is, the idea is that we cut 
one bit off so it's flat. And that's where it sits on the, uh, the cone. Oh, yeah, you get more purchase, otherwise the... Um, the gaps, yeah, it's off. not going to hold it on. This is first giant cone waffle tile. We started tiling the cone, but with each waffle taking five minutes to cook, making enough to cover the whole thing is going to take more than 24 hours. So I'm going to leave my chefs to it and get back to my ice cream. Two months ago at the factory, my first attempt at making one tonne of ice cream ended in disaster. Now I'm back in the giant freezer to see if our new freezing method has worked. Will it be frozen to the core? This is my last chance. This is in equal measures exciting and nerve wracking. If the sides stick and don't want to come off, the whole thing will collapse. The problem we've got is we have no more time to make any more ice cream. My team are using heat guns to remove the metal sides, but it's a painstaking process. One side down, one to go. But will it hold together? Success! I finally have one tonne of ice cream supporting itself. But the work is not yet done. Right now, this looks nothing like a 99. Time to try out my sculpting skills. I've done some um, slightly surreal things in my uh, life as a chef, but this has to be one of the most surreal. And certainly the coldest. Tomorrow, I want to serve this ice cream to the whole town of Gloucester. I've tasked my chief engineer, Dave, with building the scaffold and organising the crane to winch my one ton 99 onto its giant cone. What I want is calm, still, no wind, moderate sunshine, no rain. However, the weather is threatening to rain on my parade. Did you see that? It's spinning. It's spinning. In it's the spinning. Wind. spinning around. The ice cream's going to be five metres off the ground. You know, it's just, it's just new territory, so I just don't know what it's going to do. But I just really hope it doesn't fall off. <laughs> I'm now on the eve of realising a childhood dream of creating the biggest ice cream in the world. Yet, the fear of something going wrong, and there's enough opportunities for that to happen, is pretty massive. So, I've just got to cross and hope for everything, including the weather. I want to bring back the magic of ice cream and make everyone feel like kids again by building the world's biggest 99 and flake. I've chosen to serve it in Gloucester, a town which for generations has produced some of our favourite ice cream brands. Now I want to give them something back. I've been working with Dave at the Gloucester Ice Cream Factory and now it's the big day. It's dawn and a very precious cargo is on the road. One ton of ice cream is making its way to Gloucester Park. In just five hours, I am hoping that this park will be teeming with people hungry for ice cream, but it's not starting well. You can see just now it's absolutely pouring down with rain. We got stuck in the grass. Luckily we've got a crane here that we can pull it forward, so uh, yeah, what else can go wrong? We just want the weather. We want the weather just to stop and give us a bit of sunshine. It's time to round up the residents and remind them why they first fell in love with ice cream. And to do this, I'm going to employ my very own secret weapon. Classic 80s lights. State-of-the-art hubcaps. The ultimate in safety specification and iconic eye-catching design. Now this is the mother of all ice cream vans. Look at this, graphics galore. This is great for triggering nostalgia. Some personal favourites, you might recognise that cheeky face. 
together with nostalgic menu boards and some subtle design features to get everyone excited. Now, this is the ice cream van of my childhood and of my dreams. So what would every single kid want on their ice cream van? Rockets, but rockets made with real rockets. These are no ordinary rockets. They contain my own special nostalgic rocket fuel, which sprays out the smells of the great British summer. Freshly cut grass, ice cream, and suntan lotion. Time to head off, spread the word, and lure in the public. I've got some golden tickets, and uh, I'm just gonna hand them out, get people down the park. Uh, you're not free this afternoon, are you? You free this afternoon? Um, yes. Brilliant. Can I give you a golden ticket? Are you free this afternoon? Absolutely. Can I give you one of these? We're going to serve the largest ice cream and cone ever in the world. Come and have some ice cream, largest in the world. Excellent. See you later. Excellent. Thanks. Greetings to you, the lucky holder of this gold ticket from Heston Blumenthal. Please present this ticket at the Gloucester Park gates at 1 p.m. on Saturday. In your wildest dreams, you cannot imagine what awaits you. Ooh! Brilliant. <laughs> you want to get ice cream? Yeah! <laughs> uh, knowing some of the things she does on television, I'm a bit concerned about what he might do to an ice cream. <laughs> Probably blow it up or something. It's not just golden tickets I'm relying on to spread the word about my record-breaking ice cream. This is so exciting. I've got my own ice cream van. But what's better than one ice cream van? A convoy of ice cream vans. Rubber duck, rubber duck, 10-4, rubber duck. Sergeant Softy reporting to Rubber Duck. We've got ourselves a convoy. This picked up van seems to be working. People of Gloucester have been drawn to this. It's certainly a head turner. I spent months combining food, science and engineering to try to build the biggest ever ice cream. Now, will my record-breaking 99 bring back the magic and excitement of childhood in the tough, cynical 21st century? I'd say so. Thousands of residents have come out to scream for ice cream. Quest to try and bring back the ice cream van experience I remembered as a kid. It was so exciting. You know, the chimes would go, you'd be running to try and get to the van before it disappeared. And when you arrived at the van, you just saw this towering ice cream van in front of you with a hatch and the guy in his white coat. And everything was so massive. And it seems to have lost some of that excitement and charm. So what I wanted to do was bring that back, but on a massive scale. And that meant trying to make the biggest ice cream in the world. Which involves one tonne of ice cream. So the idea is there'll be a few lucky people who are going to get to fire their own toppings onto the ice cream. All right, so we've got some special state-of-the-art laser hone technological cannons. Okay, and then to add to these, we've also got some catapults. With flavour cannons in place, it's time to unveil the cone. <laughs> the largest cone in the world. In Gloucester. 
Right, that's the first part of the job done. Now I think the really dangerous part. Got to get the ice cream on. This is um, this is tense, isn't it? It is. It is. This is really tense. I'm, I just I don't think I've ever had a feeling such excitement and fear at the same time. <laughs> this one ton of ice cream has taken months to make. This is the first time it's been out of a freezer. We've only got one shot of this. Okay, this is it. God. <laughs> the lorry couldn't get any closer because of that tree. So it's, you can see now it's pulling it underneath. The slightest bump could cause a crack and disaster. This is this is a culmination of ten weeks, so yeah, lots of nerves, lots of nerves. Now for the most treacherous part of the journey, the ice cream needs to be lifted off the pallet and moved onto the cone. Hang on a second, something's stuck. Oh shit. The, uh, it's the. See, the wheels aren't are, are coming off the ground. No, 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 no. The ice cream has actually become stuck to the wooden pallet and it's so delicate that any kind of jolt could just split it. Yet we still have to somehow separate it from the pallet before it starts to melt. So they're going to try to jump on this. I can't do it. It's too painful. <laughs> I need a drink. This is the moment of truth, and it's getting quite windy. It's got to lift it right up and over that scaffolding. Oh my God! Oh God. <laughs> You know, this is officially the most ambitious thing I've ever tried to do, ever, without a doubt. No, it's, it's, it needs to go that way. Stop! In 60 years that I've been in the business, I've never seen anything quite like this. You can't have a soft serve 99 without a flake! That looks really good as well, doesn't it? It's it looks really good. good. And there it is. The largest soft serve 99 plus flake in the world. He's done it, hasn't he? I didn't think he would, he's done it. I'm blown away by the size of the ice cream that is actually technically even possible. But a 99 isn't complete without flavoured toppings. Three, two, one! Yeah. <laughs> Again for that. Who wants some ice cream? Yeah! They start serving. I think he's amazing to make this. He's like really like wow. I'll take that, I'll sprinkle and now I can see the number of people it's brought out and yeah, everyone's excited about ice cream. Do you know the best bit? When Heston drove down and it was like the ice cream tune, yeah, it was like really the old exciting. days. Yeah, it's definitely brought back childhood memories. It's really good to get that kind of community spirit about. 
It's definitely the best ice cream I've ever seen. I can't believe Hassan did it. It was magic. It was amazing. An impossible feat achieved. A special piece of British food magic brought back to life and two big kids made very happy. I could not have dreamt for yeah. it to have gone any better than that. Yeah. And do you think with all the headache, still worth it at the end? Yes. Yeah. Worth, it, worth it at the end, there's no doubt. To be able to produce the largest ice cream cone and ice cream in the world and bring a whole community together, flipping hell. If that's not exciting, you tell me what is. Thank you Thanks. So much. <laughs> Thank you. Next time, I'm reviving the magic of the most British of traditions, the tea break. <laughs> Enjoy that one. I feel like some kind of bird with hiccups. <laughs> with every child's dream, giant biscuits. A world record-sized packet. And the greatest tea bag ever brewed. All for the most amazing tea break Britain has ever seen. Yes. Live life for less by making more of your money. Mrs Moneypenny shows you how with some crafty cash-saving super scrimper winter survival tips tomorrow at 8. Well, next on for Vod wants Oregon's Wee Wee and Sabine wants Howard's Seed. Fresh meat gets a bit too organic after the break. Thank you.